Well, I suppose if you want to bring out the best side of the MX-5, which has always been, it feels like you're going faster than you are. You can drive within the speed limits like a bit of a cock in one of these, and it feels like you're doing 100 anyway, and you look down and you're doing 60. Well. Welcome back to another episode of Petrol Poodle. And we've got another modification must, or MX-5 musts. I don't know if that name's taken, fingers crossed it's not. If you're like me and you've got a stock MX-5 and you're looking for something a little bit to spice it up, well, my first recommendation, it's got to be the roll bar. I've got a video on that already and do check it out. But let's say your car is now safe to go and you want to make it a little bit more fun. Now, depending on who you ask, literally 50% of owners in a poll I did will tell you, you've got to do suspension first. That is the most fun thing. It's, it transforms the car. The other 50% will say, no, no, you've got to do the exhaust. The car is so muted stock and it, it comes alive with a little bit of extra sound. So I've, I've been personally really unsure which one of these I want to do first, and I keep changing my mind. Along comes an angel two weeks ago, driving past me in this car, with both of these modifications done. A little bit of flirting, a little bit of flattery, and he's allowed me to review the car today. So I'm incredibly grateful and a massive thank you to Ayrton for that. So, here's the thing that you need to know. It's not gonna be a completely equal fair test of which one should you go for, because he's put a lot more money into the amazing advanced BC coilovers and has put, I'd say, less of his budget into the exhaust. It's not one of the high-end 800 pound full exhaust systems. It's a, it's a kind of more like a back box to lead. Much better, isn't it? Uh oh. Oh my god, the car feels so much more planted. It feels so much more direct. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my god, I was not expecting that. Oh, I'm going to take it a little bit easy. Now, let's talk about the suspension first. Looking at that ride height, as I'll show you in the clips now, you would expect this thing to be a bit of a punishing ride. And I think it's the first thing that, most, that scares most people out of this whole coilover idea. Well, that's why you spend maybe 170 pounds on these coilovers. The quality is immediately obvious, because despite how low that is, it was, I would say that is as compliant as the stock suspension. I was not expecting that at all. The most popular suspension mod or kind of handling mod for the MX-5s, everyone says put your RX-8 uh, yellow dot anti-roll bars on the car. And I think they actually do make a lot of sense for most people who don't want to drop the ride height too much. But assuming this hasn't had the roll bars done, I can't believe how the body roll has changed so drastically. So understandably, the, the stiffer roll bars is actually one of the most popular mods. With these coilovers, I don't feel like that's necessary. There's, it's a much, much tighter, much tighter control. There's far less body roll. And the, little, the differences are from subtle to quite great. For example, planting your foot down, the car doesn't lean back. When you put the brakes on, it doesn't kind of nose dive forwards. Everything feels quite solid and set. And despite how my brain imagines it, it, it isn't crashy. I'm starting to see the value in these coilovers, I must say. I'm no suspension expert, but what I can tell you about the difference on coilovers and say just dropping the springs is that adjustable coilovers are, as they say in the title, you can change the ride height, you can change the firmness, you can change a few things around. So if you're on a, going on a track day, you can firm it up. If you're gonna be going through places with lots of speed bumps, you can kind of rise the height a little bit. 
They cost a lot of money, but I'm, I can see why you would do it. So this car is running hub-centric spaces as well, which means the alloys and the wheels are attached more to the hub than they would be with traditional spacers. They're a lot safer a prospect. The spacers are 25 mil, and if you look at the difference between the stock spacing of the wheels and now on screen these, it makes you question why these wheels were ever so narrow in the first place. I now can't unsee what I've seen, and it looks like someone has kicked the wheels into my car. So, Regardless of what budget I've got to spend, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is that at the very least the spacers, they look better and they seem to give the car a nice planted feel as well. Now, to this exhaust, I've mentioned what should we go for? Suspension exhaust, suspension exhaust. There's no doubt in my mind this exhaust is hilarious. It adds a lot more character to the engine and it's bringing out a side to this car I haven't seen before. Now, if this is your weekend toy or your second car, I would go for this, about 185 pounds for this kind of back box delete. I definitely would go for it. In my line of work, it's my only car and there are days that I do three hours of driving. <laughs> Listen to how much noise we have at under 2000 RPM in I think fifth. <laughs> I imagine when you want it to be off and you want to relax, no. There is no off in this car. That's, that's not happening. What I use my MX-5 for, I think I would spend the extra money. I'd go for something that has the resonators and the, you know, soaks up some of that noise at lower RPM, personally. But we're all different, aren't we? Funnily enough, I haven't noticed so much from a driver's kind of line of sight point of view. I haven't really noticed the fact that I'm sat lower than I'm used to in mine. I'm sure if I sat in them side by side, I would. So I still recommend dropping the seats. Again, look at my previous video, definitely drop the seats if you've got an MX-5, one of these, just do it, you won't regret it. For me, it's this, this handling difference is, is unbelievable. I really wasn't expecting that great a change. And I'm gonna try and find some slightly rougher roads to see if I've just been lucky with perhaps some uh, some friendly roads, but it doesn't really feel too different, which is still boggling my mind. And this time I'm gonna try not to shit myself and crash somebody's car. <laughs> now, Ed's just raised a very valid point here that we're mostly idling at around 2000 because we're doing 30 miles an hour. To sit on the motorway at 3000, let's see, let's see how that would be, let's go down. This is, this is your idol. We're doing 40 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. But, you know, as you've probably guessed by now, this isn't Etten's only car. So it does make sense to have something where you just go, fuck it, let's just go mental and have the loud exhaust and the mental suspension as well. So what does it cost to install the BC coilovers? And actually, let's also touch on the fact you can get more track ready, more expensive coilovers. He's gone for the road setup, or uh, well, the road coilovers, and they're about 900 pounds. When asked how much it cost to fit, he said the place he went, it was 400 pounds. It's quite an expensive thing to invest in, 1300 pounds into your car, but I can see why you do it. It is, it is like a different car. It, it does bring out, it just does bring this car, it just brings out another side, doesn't it? <laughs> People must be thinking that we're doing 100 down this road. <laughs> and it's like, we're tickling 41 miles an hour. Well, that's what it's fun about. It is, it? it's great. And you can floor it everywhere. Well, I suppose if you want to bring out the best side of the MX-5, which has always been, it feels like you're going faster than you are. You can drive within the speed limits like a bit of a cock in one of these, and it feels like you're doing 100 anyway, and you look down and you're doing 60. Well, take the resonators out the back, and it amplifies that even more. 
I mean, I'm really tempted to do this, don't get me wrong. I am really tempted to do this to my car as well. But I'm having to remember the times that I drive with my girlfriend on long distances and I'll probably shoot myself if I, if I put this exact box on. I think it's answered the question, I need to swap out that stock box and do something else. This is so much fun. And like now just giving it a little a little wobble. It's it's the movement here that really gets me. It does feel so different. I mean yeah, there's plenty of there's plenty of turn as soon as you're off center. It does react really nicely. And now for the conclusion. It's actually quite a difficult thing to just definitively say what you should do. I actually think it comes down to the budget. If you've got 1,300 pounds, 1,200 pounds, something in that neighborhood to spend on your MX-5, go for the suspension. It's amazing. It is how, what the reviews say, it's absolutely awesome. And it really does change the character of this car. It becomes a much more serious, capable machine. It's, it's hilarious fun. But, you know, not everyone does have that money. And let's say, as I said earlier, you're only planning on keeping the car a couple of years and that 1300 is a bit harder to justify over that long time. Well, let's say you've got a 500 pound budget, probably close to what I'm actually gonna have when I first modify mine. I'd go for the exhaust and I would go for a proper exhaust that has a little bit more of the sound resonator stuff, doesn't drone at low speeds and drone on the motorway, but gives the bark and gives this personality that this particular one has. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, if you have the ideas, things you wanna see or a car of your own, let me know, leave some comments. What did you do to yours? Have an argument, all that stuff. And uh, either way, please do like and subscribe. Thanks very much, I'll see you for the next one.